Okay, everyone, we're going to talk about the anatomy of shoulder x-rays and answer the question, what anatomy can you see on an AP, lateral Y, and SI axial view of shoulder x-rays? And what in the dickens does that mean? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So a couple of things first. I'm an anatomist, not a radiologist. So when I teach uh, shoulder anatomy, I usually use pictures like this. But today, I'm going to use x-rays to teach shoulder anatomy. And so the goal is to teach shoulder anatomy using x-rays, not so much to teach you how to be a radiologist um, looking at x-rays. And But I am going to use the standard shoulder series that are used in radiology, an AP view, external and internal rotation of the humerus, a lateral Y view, and an SI, superior inferior axial view. Let's start with the shoulder AP view of the right shoulder first. So here we have a patient, then you place their back against the image receptor, and then the patient may be slightly rotated so the body of the scapula is parallel to the image receptor. And then the humerus is externally rotated like this. Shing, one more time, shing, to best see the greater tubercle, and then we take a picture or take an x-ray of the shoulder. And there is a picture of a patient with his um, shoulder against the image receptor, and you can see the light of where the x-ray is going to be taken, which looks like this. And so the clavicle is the first bone to identify there, the collarbone. There's our clavicle, and then that little doohickey in the bottom is called the conoid tubercle. The scapula is next, and what are the bony landmarks in the scapula? Well, there's this thing first, which forms the point of the shoulder, which is the acromion, like the acropolis at the point of the side of the mountain. Acromion is the side or point of the shoulder. And uh, then anatomist said, well, what do we call this joint that's between the acromion and the clavicle? And they said, hey, why don't we call it the acromioclavicular joint or AC joint for short? Then we take a look at this and say, oh, what is that? Well, that is the spine of the scapula. It's a very prominent uh, surface landmark on the back of the shoulder blade. And there we have something that an anatomist said that looked like the crow of a, the beak of a crow. So they called it the coracoid process for muscle, at, and it's for muscle attachment. It's a very prominent landmark as well. And then right here, we see the glenoid cavity, also known as the glenoid fossa. That forms the socket of the ball and socket joint of the shoulder. And then here, we have the lateral margin or lateral border of the scapula, and it's also called the axillary border because it's the side of the shoulder, the side of the scapula where your armpit or axilla is. And then in contrast, there we have the medial border or medial margin of the scapula, also called the vertebral border because it is the side of the scapula where the vertebrae are. And then the very top, we see this angle, and they said, what do we call it? The superior angle of the scapula where... Um, Levator scapulae is going to attach. And then there's our humerus. And the landmarks on there is the greater tubercle of the humerus, where uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor attach. And that's the greater tubercle, also known as the greater tuberosity. And then there is the lesser tubercle, or lesser tuberosity, and that's where the subscapularis muscle attaches. And then anatomist said, well, what do we call this groove right in between the middle? And they said, well, why don't we call it the intertubercular groove, because it's between the greater and lesser tubercles. But then also, the long head of the biceps course is right through that groove, so they also call it the bicipital groove, which uh, just by chance is the name of my band. Um, actually, I don't have a band. Okay, so there we now have the head of the humerus, which forms the ball of the ball and socket joint of the glenohumeral joint. And that space right in between, that's the glenohumeral joint. And then we also have this structure here, which they call the anatomical neck because it's the neck right below the head. But then we also have this one, which is called the surgical neck because that's where uh, often fractures can occur in adults and the uh, axillary nerve course is right behind that. So a surgical neck fracture often will hurt or injure the axillary nerve. And then finally in the diaphysis or shaft of the humerus, we have this groove on the back of the humerus called the spiral groove, also known as the radial groove because the radial nerve course is in it. With a spiral groove or mid-humeral groove fracture, the radial nerve is often injured. So let's do now the shoulder AP view, but show the internal rotation. So the humerus is internally rotated like that to best see the lesser tubercle, and then the picture is taken. And so doing internal and external rotation enables us to get an entire view of the head of the humerus and proximal view. And so there's external rotation, there's internal rotation, external and internal. It's not perfect, 
but you get an idea of the movement of this head of the proximal part of the humerus. So there's the head and there's the head uh, of the humerus in this. And then there's the greater tubercle and external rotation, internal rotation, external, pardon me, let me go back and let me do that again. Greater tubercle, greater tubercle, greater tubercle and external rotation, greater tubercle and internal rotation. And then there's our lesser tubercle for externally rotated and internally rotated. And you see, you see that uh, lesser tubercle coursing more anteriorly. So now let's do the shoulder or lateral Y view. And so to do this, you have the patient uh, is facing the image receptor and then they're rotated. So anterior part of the shoulder touches the detector from here to here. <clears throat> and then you take the picture. And so here we have the patient and you can see um, the view where the patient actually has their elbow flexed and their hand, the palm of their hand is touching their belly. And then you can see where that light is, where we're taking the picture of the shoulder. And so what we're going to do is focus in a little bit more and get a little bit closer. And that's what we, we, we call the Y view. And why is it called the Y view? Because take a look, it looks like a Y that's there. All right, so some of the bones. So there we have the clavicle or the collarbone. And there we have it articulating with the acromion. And so there's the acromion in this Y view. And then there is the, uh, between the acromion and clavicle is the acromial clavicular joint. And then on the very top of the scapula, there we have the superior angle of the scapula. And then coming off the acromion, there is the spine of the scapula. And then there we have that spine of the scapula looking very prominent. And then we also have, oh, whoops, I went backwards, pardon me. And there we have the supraspinous fossa for the supraspinatus muscle attaching right there. And then you also have below the spine, the infraspinous fossa, where the infraspinatus muscle attaches. And then on the front of the scapula, that is the subscapular fossa, where the subscapularis muscle attaches there. Then this thing that looks like a crow's beak, there's the coracoid process, right there, very prominent. And then there you see the head of the humerus, and then there is the shaft of the humerus. So the lateral Y view is great at demonstrating the coracoid process and acromion, and also good for showing dislocations and then scapular fractures and degeneration. Uh, that's what it's good for. Um, the shoulder, now we're gonna do a superior inferior axial view on the right. So the patient is seated next to the image receptor like this, and then the arm is abducted, and the elbows rested on the image detector, and then the patient's head is tilted towards the unaffected side to avoid the head being uh, irradiated. And that's the view that we're getting, okay? And so this is a superior view, and that is what is actually being the picture taken of, which looks like this. Okay, and so there we have the scapula, the clavicle, and the humerus. So there on the scapula is a very prominent acromion from a superior view. And then there we have the collarbone or the clavicle from a superior view. And then right in between the two, there's the, between the acromion and the clavicle is the acromioclavicular joint. Okay, and you can see that outline there. Next, we have this structure, and that is the socket of the ball and socket joint, the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. And that's going to articulate with the head of the humerus that's going to then form the glenohumeral joint, that ball and socket joint. Then we have this structure coursing out anteriorly. That's the coracoid process of the scapula. Then this little one right there, that is the lesser tubercle or lesser tuberosity of the humerus. And this um, axial view is great at demonstrating orthogonal images of the shoulder, which is at right angle to what you usually get in an AP view of the shoulder, and also good for dislocations and proximal humeral, glenohumeral, articular surface problems is what this view is good at. And that, my friends, is the anatomy of the shoulder through x-rays in a nutshell. 